Okay, drop in a couple of frames, hopefully that will address that problem. Hmm. So I don't know if any of this is actually recorded so far, but I'll check it out afterwards. Uh, this guy doesn't need to use stone wall. Definitely does not need to use stone wall. So just saying needs to tweak his initiative so he doesn't block his own units. That's always good. Those are the little things that are really important to improve upon um, between games. Um, so he's got a pretty strong formation. I'm not really going to be able to get around to his archers unless I slowly move around in pairs, especially with this terrain to block him up. I'm getting the feeling that um, this build just doesn't work <laughs> with this terrain. The good formations can't fit. Um, it's really hard to circle around. I'm thinking more maneuverable builds with more axemen and less foul are a lot more effective in this level. But it's all part of the testing, figure out what works with what. Also, archers are probably quite good on this map, hiding behind it. Give them some extra defenses. So this um, strong arm's actually kind of stuck over here. Uh, so that's something to consider. If I don't engage with him, he can't actually do anything. So I need to attack on this side. Um, so I want to actually block... No, I don't want to block that Thrasher. I'll force the Thrasher out. Um, I'm actually just going to go after the Shield Banger here. I'm going to start knocking off armor. So this is probably premature. Maybe uh, I should be doing something else for a bit longer. Just slowly walking up and moving into position. But I'm going to go for it. Because I want to force his Thrasher out. So that I can attack it. Speaking of friends playing Banner Saga. There's one right now. Uh, so yeah, hopefully some of my real life friends will be getting into it. So it always makes everything more fun. It's good. So the thrash has moved out of position. This guy here is still blocked. Um, I don't want to move next to him. So I am just going to move up and break armor. Oh! So much for that plan. The old rain of arrows, ruining even the most well laid plan. Oh, so always pay attention to these buffs in here. I could have seen quite easily that she'd laid down a rain of arrows and I should have remembered. But instead I just strolled up like a doofus. Uh, so I'm going to get this guy in position over here. Actually, he should have gone into there. That was a bad move. Because um, this guy could have moved into here much more easily. One, two, three, four, five. So he can still get there with a willpower, but it's a waste of one willpower there. Um, these two are definitely going to beat this guy on his own. So he's going to need some support. I might actually send both my uh, strong arms around this way. Strong arm versus strong arm. That's going to be interesting. Uh, but I'm going to yeah, make him wait. He's got these two units that are kind of waiting. I'm going to do as much damage over on this side to bust through while he's wasting all that time over there. But yeah, so main problem uh, this run is my strong arms just weren't in formation. I didn't get my formation set up at the start. Which gives me a big disadvantage because it means my these two units are going to be doing nothing the entire game. Um, fortunately, this strong arm, and to a lesser extent, this backwider isn't going to be doing much for a while. Um, if this backwider does come after the strong arm, he's just going to get punched in the face for a ton of damage. Um, problem is, once this strong arm follows up, it'll be quite nasty. I'll just move straight up for now. Yeah. 
I can't get any um, battering rams off here, though that would be very nice. If I, yeah, if I had this kind of better position, I would have battering rammed one, two, three, f one, two, th no, I couldn't have, not quite. Um, so I'm going to move into a position where this guy can't get to me. Yep, that's good. Uh, so then I can follow up on attack, or counter-attack the backbiter if need be. It's good. Okay, end the turn. Uh, so keep in mind there's shortcut keys as well you should be using. Um, I haven't got the hang of them just yet, um, but a quick one for end turn is 4, so don't press 4 unless you definitely want to end your turn. I think 1's move, 2 is special ability, 3 is attack. Um, but check it for yourself, don't quote me on that. I think that's what it is though. There's always um, some little guides up on the forums, if you're not sure. Okay, so after this turn it might be a good opportunity to battering around one of these guys through, start attacking some archers. I'll probably want to put through the high health guy. I'll probably want to stonewall beforehand. Um, but positioning means that I'm not going to be able to... Um, oh! Nice play, so that kind of stops that battering ram. I could knock this guy back out the back. One, two, three. No, I can't because he's blocked. Okay, so this guy is going to break on the Thrasher again. This Axeman's going to go up here and break on the Strong Arm um, and move out of the way for the two higher health targets. So this guy can attack him. This guy can't really do much, um, but his strong arm's going to act before mine, so hopefully something will happen there. Uh, this guy's going to almost kill this dude. This guy can't do much except a uh, bloody flail here, which would be good. Yep. Lucky it's only one at the end. This guy is completely incapacitated. Oh, I can actually move up to the... Yeah, so all my guy's movement is in the wrong order. It's not real good. Um, might actually move to here. Break on this guy. And then get battering round through. I'll probably just attack him actually. I can get battering ramps through a bit later on. So... I've got these two guys pretty softened up. This guy needs one more break. I need to get to these archers at this point, because uh, my guys are getting pretty softened up themselves. And we've lost armor and strength. It's not really ideal. Okay, this guy's going to go after the strong arm, like I said. So that means strong arm versus strong arm, my guy will win. And that means this guy can get some position on both of these guys, so I can go and knock through here. It will cost me three armor, though. Because um, I didn't use uh, any defensive abilities. I probably favor killing the Thrasher because he can do a lot more with Bloody Flail. Oh, okay, now I can't knock that guy through safely at all. Okay. So I'm going to finish breaking here. Yeah, so I'm going to go kill with this guy, kill with this guy, get this guy to stonewall, then knock him through. Actually, if I kill here, that opens up this position so these guys can funnel through here. So it might... Oh. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, yeah. Could have put it anywhere. That's really quite annoying. Uh, I can hope... Okay. 
So I'm guessing she put it here. She might have put it here though. But I've got to move here. This is where she put it. She definitely put it right here. But moving there would actually block this guy, which would be much worse. So I'm going to eat the one strength damage. No! Okay. Surprised. Going to... Seems like a bad idea. Strong arm... One's, yeah. Oh! I missed my turn because I wasn't paying enough attention. I should have battering rammed through there um, because the archer's turn was right at the end. He could have gotten an attack off. Um, but I would have lost a lot of... a lot, a lot, a lot of... a lot of stuff. So I'm going to walk in and eat this damage right here. No, he must have put it right there. Okay, killing the Thrasher. Thrasher is a um, bigger threat at this moment. Um, this guy's blocked in, can only really kill this guy here. Um, could knock off some armor of these guys. That's a lesser threat. And this opens up this position so I can attack this Archer more directly. I did avoid that Rain of Arrows though, which is the most important thing. Um, and instead of knocking guys through here, I can just um, kill this, this Provoker to get through, and that's going to give me full access to the Archers. This guy's already lost a little bit of armor. Um, I need to get a good hit off on him. Um, my strong arm here is actually in a position where he can attack without being counter... Uh, get off the first hit. Oh, so that's really good. Um, I'm going to finish... Ooh. Yeah, so... Pff, basically blocking myself here. I could end up blocking myself even worse. Yeah, I'm going to break this guy's armor and then try to kill him. Um, this guy. Yep, and then I can try to move through afterwards. That's my play. So this guy will get off an attack on him. This guy will kill this guy. Then I can worry about the archers. So then there'll be no other threats except for archers, and I can just slowly work my way towards them. Um, I could run all the way around here and get off an attack, which will kill him, and let my guy get off an attack on the archers. I'm totally doing that. That's my move. Um, one of them will get an attack off first, though. Um, so they might be able to cripple him. Or almost kill him right now. Um, so they could, if I was them, I'd go shoot this guy next turn, shoot that guy. Um... Yeah, but I can still move in here and break some armor. And this will block her in, so that way my strong arm can attack her if he wants to. Um, this enemy strong arm is probably the bigger threat, though, at this point. I just need to make sure I don't kill any, because uh, this backlighter needs to die. So there's a tough play here. Um, you can try to move her and shoot this guy. You can stand her there, she's going to die, but then he'll get a good counter-attack. And this guy will be left to attack this one. Yeah, so he's gone for the move. Um, I probably would have stood there and did the puncture, because choosing between attacking these two is really tough. Um, I generally try to always use puncture, but this willpower, that's a good play. It crippled him. Now I've got to attack onto there. Um, this will be fine. Move up. Ooh, I don't want to kill this guy, and this will actually kill him. Okay, it's that guy. Okay, that's fine. Yep, I can kill this guy. That'll bring the archer up. Um, but this guy won't be able to get positioning. But he'll be able to run away now. So now all of these units will be able to get to safety from this strong arm right here. Um, so that's pretty good, actually, moving in here and attacking him, now that this guy can't attack. I like it. 
Moves to safety. Oh, he killed this guy though, so now I can actually move in attack. So I wouldn't have killed that guy. Um, I probably would have just danced around and done nothing on my turn. Because uh, this is going to possibly win me the game. Uh, not sure. Remains to be seen. But now I've got a uh, strength advantage and an armor advantage. Um, he doesn't have any armor breakers left. This guy has 14-15. I'd say that's probably the game for me. Even if I just had this unit left alive. Assuming I can get off another break on this girl right here, which I'm about to do. Probably in the game. Actually, one really good point is um, this guy's my only armor breaker, so I still need to break a lot of armor over here. But with 15 strength and 15 strength, it's probably actually not that big of a deal. Yeah. I think right now I could win with just these two. But this guy breaking armor is definitely nice. Uh, this kind of forces the archers to move because they're both adjacent. Oh yeah, that's a good play. Um, so it's going to be right here. Uh, I'm just going to walk up and eat it. I'm going to lose one strength, um, but I'm going to get slightly closer, uh, which is going to help me on my next turn. So here I'll probably take two damage, he'll lose one armor, and then I'll be able to counterattack over the top. Um, I have actually blocked myself here. He's blocking the archers, so that's that's good. That's a good play. It's three on three at this point. Oh nice. That that's good. I like that. Um but it does open up an attack off here. Uh Sky Striker will get a rain of arrows though. Um so I'm actually gonna move to here. That puts me within three. I'm gonna move to here. Um puts me slightly closer, but this guy can still move in. Um, but as I said, she will get a rain of arrows off, um, which can stop one of those guys from moving in. So, I mean, he's actually in a pretty good position, much better than I was expecting, just because he can really abuse rain of arrows in this situation. Moving over here, moving adjacent, but I'm actually going to break armor on the strong arm. Because um, he's the, the real problem for these guys to deal with. The archers, actually, archers are really good against strong arms as well because um, they can just keep running away forever unless they're in the corner as you can see we're up against an edge but we're not in a corner so he probably might win this just um, letting me kill the strong arm and then running the two archers around for the rest of the game until they eventually run out of armor and then start dying I don't actually have any exertion on these archers on um, these strong arms so yeah they will eventually go down um, I may as well just move the full distance um, because there's going to be a rain of arrows somewhere there. If you put it here, that's actually probably dumb. Um, but my strong arm will get a get a move. So yeah, this this is yeah not great. Archer maneuverability is pretty good. Basically got to get him into the corner. Okay, she's out of willpower now, so all she can do is shoot from max range. So my guys will maybe eventually get them stuck in the corners. I'll lose a bit of strength here, um, but I'll get to break some armor. Oh, okay, just one. Lose a bit of armor. Yeah, so he's really stopping these strong arms from doing anything. Um, I assume now my uh, axe master will die. She's got to move, yeah, she can definitely kill him here. He could go for an armor hit here. So he's probably going to try to get a pillage, it's looking like. No, he's just going to go for that. So now I get to kill the strong arm, and then the sad times begin. Um, oh, I can get a hit off on her. Oh, that is... Wait. Oh, because he killed my Axeman. Okay, so he killed my Axeman, that's really bad for him. Because now I have turn advantage and my guy gets a double move and can kill her. Um, but now he has turn advantage, uh, turn equality now. So um, he can keep running away, but as you can see, he's only got three squares left to move. Um, so I can run him down now. Um, so killing that Axeman is probably a bad move. He would have been better off trying to do as much armor damage to these two strong arms as possible. I'm going to move around him as much as I can um, before going for an attack. Um, so that way I start to close in on this archer. 
it's basically you get down to these last two. Um, this guy will be killed by the archer's um, puncture um, before he can get into position. Oh, she's doing a smart thing and going for the... Um... Oh, she's got two armor break. That is awesome. Um, I'm actually going to try to get as close as I can now that this guy can't really hurt me. Um, since she's moved up, it's going to force her to move away and start pushing her in the corner so I can focus on killing her before I kill this guy, um, which is preferable because uh, she's ranged in their melee. And while I've got turn equality, um, and if he does kill one of them, then I'll get it'll pillage will activate, so then I'll just be turn equality again. Should be fine. Um, so, by moving this guy to here, he's guaranteed to get an attack off on the archer on his next turn, um, because she can only move three, um, and if she moves she's got to give up a puncture, so she'd be better off just puncture shooting him. She's going to do quite a lot of damage, I think, uh, she'll get far three bonus, plus three, six damage, so that'll put him to five, six. So he'll only be hitting her for 3, putting it at 5. Um, the problem is my other strong arm will get to attack her, which is the real problem. Uh, and it's his turn right now. Um, so I thought I was going to lose this game early on, um, but it's managed to pull through. Um, even though these strong arms were really out of position, I managed to break up enough armor, not lose my axemen too early, so they could actually break enough armor that I could eventually just overpower him with superior stats. Um, in this situation, uh, I'm going to move as far around him as possible, um, and I'm actually just going to break armor. Um, just to make sure this... Ah, oh, I've got pillage, so now I kill him. Awesome. Okay, great game. I really wasn't expecting to win that one. Uh, maybe this build's actually good. Maybe I just got lucky. Uh, for the matches. Yeah, really good games. Okay, um, so I still wanted to go back and make one more tweak. Um, this last tweak I'm going to make um, is actually more of a variation. So my idea is you saw that formation where I'm in kind of a T-shape, where I've got um, these three guys at the front and then this guy at the back here. Um, one way to really improve this formation is to actually put in a thrasher. Uh, so if I'm slowly moving forwards with that formation, by putting a thrasher, oops, sorry about that, putting a thrasher up in here, oops. so putting a thrasher in the middle, this is actually going to make it so he gets um, the plus three damage from the adjacents, plus lots of bonus armor. Um, so I think three axemen with this thrasher, they are going to be able to dive on the thrasher and just try to burn him down. Um, but he's going to have so much bonus armor that I don't think they'll be able to just straight up killing him. These guys next to him will be using shield wall, uh, will be granting him shield wall bonus armor, and they'll be using stone wall. Um, so my opponent's best strategy is probably just to burn down the thrasher as quickly as possible, but they're going to have to invest a lot in it. And by that stage, then I should be able to counterattack. Um, and moving forward in this formation means that that thrasher is going to be guaranteed hitting for four strength damage. Um, so whoever that T butts up against is going to be taking a ton. Um, so at that point it's worth using it even against provokers and um, other shield bangers. Uh, even though you eat for armor damage. Um, so yeah, really good. So that's my idea. Um, I'm not sure whether I'll stick around with this for Axeman build or whether I'll tweak it and run that. Um, maybe I'll put it to the fans. So you guys can let me know which you'd like to see more of. Four Axemen, two Strong Arm, or three Axe Master, one Thrasher, two Strong Arms. And I'll play that more, some more tomorrow night. Okay, well, hope you enjoyed that. Have a good one, and tune in for part four as soon as I get a chance to record it.